Happy family, wherever you are, good morning on good this morning. rainy morning in Kingston, Jamaica. But I'm sure it may be, the sun is shining still somewhere. And I hope even if it's not shining where you are, it's shining in your heart this morning. With yes. me is the reverend. Oh, you mean the reverend. <laughs> you see, I'm speaking these things into being. Uh -huh. Yes, but Reverend this, Conroy. <laughs> <laughs> we're here today with Nordy Sinclair, who is our DI writer for the month of November, Mama Stepper, passport chair, licensed <laughs> teacher, lawyer, you all name it, she's just it all. Welcome, welcome to all of you. This is the Universal Center of Truth for Better Living or Adventure in Faith, AIF for short. Oh my gosh, Conroy, can you believe it that can we're in the fifth week? Fifth week, Yes, fifth of week. AIF already. It's our annual makeover series. And this year we're moving with the theme, I choose to live, live my, my destiny. destiny. And so far we've covered three areas. We did um, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. And of course, last week was physical. And yes. you know, we kicked it up yes. with a get in shape and seize your destiny sermon by Reverend Sheila, which was preceded by the work of by the steppers family and i hope you've been getting in shape you know because yeah whatever works for you do something physical so you know we're using the bible as our primary text and the book the destiny They're step here. into your purpose by td jakes have you been enjoying the experience guys have you been choosing to live your destiny if you have been you should be in a better place than where you started on october 11th when aif started and if you have not started guess what don't beat up yourself just recommit and begin again. Now, each week we've been giving away complimentary copies of our November, December edition of the Daily Inspiration for Better Living, our yes. sister publication of our parent organization, Universal Foundation for Better Living, compliments of the board of directors. So we want to say thank you to the board thank and you thank board. you to our writer, oh, Nadia. You're welcome. The DI, as we call it, is on sale at our church office at Seymour Park location in Kingston. And a copy is, if you want an e-copy, you can get at ufbl.org. The, the, the November, December edition is a special edition. It's a Jamaican edition. Yes. As both writers are from Kingston, Jamaica. Nordy Sinclair and Camaria Brown. But guess what? Because we're also celebrating with the United States the completion of their election <laughs> and the president-elect Joe Biden and vice president-elect uh, uh, Kamala, who is of Jamaican descent, you know yes. we're just celebrating Jamaica. Yes, so we're we take away. Yes, so we so. take everything like it's ours. We take everything like it's ours. Yes, ma'am. Reverend is in the so we have to give it rev. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, since uh, October 11th, we have been celebrating also the 25th anniversary of UCT as a ministry yes. in Jamaica. That's an awesome achievement, 25 you know. 25 years. Right. So today we have been having greetings. You know that, right? So today we have greetings from Reverend Robert. Howard from the Temple Spirit of Truth in Chicago, Illinois. So let's watch this video now. Hello, my name is Robert J.W. Hubbard, and I am the senior minister here at the Temple of Spirit of Truth, located in Chicago, Illinois. On behalf of the entire TST family, we want to wish UTC and the Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen a happy 25th anniversary. We thank you for all the work that you do and we sincerely appreciate your devotion, your dedication, your love, and your spirit. Thank you so much for leading the way and we look forward to what God will continue to do in and through your life, world, and affairs. So we bless you and we love you. Thank you so much, Reverend Hubbard, for all the blessings as we continue to grow. This week's journey takes us down the road of relationships. So, guess what? Well, first of all, are you in a relationship now, dear? I'm in several. Oh, my gee. No, let's go to a commercial break. A rev is in the church. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, Conrad. I'm in several relationships. I'm in a relationship with God. Yes. I'm in a relationship with myself with my mom, with my bosses at work, with my co-workers, with my friends. I'm in a relationship with my partner. Let's not forget my puppy. And I'm in a relationship <laughs> with you here at UCT, Conroy. Absolutely. We are all in relationships. And so today is extremely special. Thanks for the clarification, Nadia. I didn't want us <laughs> to lose our first-time guests. 
uh, so they're not sure where they're at. <laughs> if you're visiting with us for the very first time, you are at the Universal Center of Truth for Better Living, a member church of the Universal Foundation for Better Living, founded in 1974 by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, and now led by our own senior minister, Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeitha. And we know that UFBL has churches and study groups and, you know, satellite centers all over the world with dynamic leaders, teachers, ministers. And today, we have the benefit of hearing from one of those ministers, Reverend Sherry James, Senior Minister for Understanding Principles Up Church in Los Angeles, California. Yes, we are talking about relationships and oh Reverend Sherry will talk to you on the topic on the right people will ensure you reach your destiny. Reverend Sherry will also be facilitating the after service discussion in the Zoom room. So, it's a great time to start a watch party okay, with let all me make sure your start relationships. Mine. Yes, yes, man. Let me go in and go start. Go in mine. your phone and find all your relationships, like Nadia listed them earlier, <laughs> and start a watch party. Go on WhatsApp, tell your friends they can't miss this. Because you know relationships are so important as we live in community with each other. I'm like, listen, this week, you know, we really have been looking for, we went in search of those persons who could share with us about their relational experiences. After all, we really are a church which espouses practical Christianity. So this is what some of our congregants had to say, Conroy. My name is Lorraine. I'm Everton. I'm Kellyanne. And I'm Victoria. And I'm we Ryan. are the Youngers! Yay! Okay, I'm Nadine Newsom and I'm Kyle's mommy. And my name is Kyle Williams. Everton, that's your plan. I got introduced to the UCT in 2010 or 2011. I was invited by Joan Cole. I attended one of the evening sessions during the Lenten period and I visited one Sunday and I've been attending ever since. After that, the rest of the family came along. Just follow back in, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was introduced to UCT in 2016. Myself and some of my co-workers were going to see Ayan Levanzant in Montego Bay and we got a call the very morning to say, Oh, a reverend, can we allow a reverend Sheila? She said the name, but we didn't connect to a company. So we got the directions to go to her house and we picked her up. And the moment she entered the car, she was so peaceful. She was just so relaxed. And then we just started talking and chilling. And we had really a lovely journey to and from Montego Bay. And during the trip, she told me about her church. I questioned her because I was looking also for a church home for Kyle. Um, I wasn't comfortable about the, the different churches that he was going to. And um, I, I followed Reverend Sheila literally to church. And um, I was hooked. I, Kyle started attending the Sunday school and I remember one day he, he, in the car he said to me, Mommy, you know that church teaches you about how to, how to, that church teaches you how to survive in the real world? And I said to myself, yes, that's, that's the best place for him. And from then I've been going and started to attend the, the classes, until I participated, I was spiritually baptized along with Kyle and everything has just been uphill from there. When I started the church, I started to feel very comfortable around everyone. I see it, I feel very welcome. I describe the relationship that my family and I have as a roller coaster. Well, pretty much the same thing. It's like complicated at times, frustrating at times, you know, normal family stuff. But for the most part, it's like, it's really light and, you know, fun. Like she said, we don't take much stuff seriously. It's easy for us to like joke around with each other and just like have fun with each other. So, yeah. It's dynamic because it's ever changing. Always unfolding. There's never a dull moment in our household. 
I feel I feel loved by everyone in my family. Yeah, so 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 although Kyle is my only son, but he was born in a in a in a huge extended family that includes his great grandmother who raised me and his you know his auntie who is also very close to his dad is also away but very active in his life and supports him and um, his uncle and aunties and grand aunt and we just okay <laughs> that I've had was uh, when we went to um, POT that was in San Antonio. San Antonio and so Everton decided that we were gonna go on a road trip we had just um, been involved in a car accident in Jamaica and so just imagine he rented a car we're all going on this road trip to this out mall or this outlet and the rain started to fall so we just in an accident in, in Jamaica in an all made upon Jesus Jesus! Why? Jesus! Why? God. Why? 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 Oh God, look how many people are dead in Come on, we said, Oh my God, I'm the presence of God all day. <laughs> it was, it was really, it was really, but it was really a fun. When we reached the mall, it was dry, and it was, it was awesome. So for me, the most memorable moments are those moments when we get to be as a family outside of the house space. Outside of the regular operational activities, there's no school, there's no work, and we just get to express ourselves as a family in whatever way it happens. that we are all divine human beings and with the, the principles that we practice at our church we understand that patience is very important and also looking at, at each other as love and so what I do is separate the behavior from the person and so I get to tolerate you know so you know it's, it's not always easy it's not always easy and a lot of times you really don't remember but we do a lot of classes at church and um, I'm always involved. I'm now doing Bible and um, the seven spiritual um, laws, of laws of success with um, Dr. Jean Bowman. And trust me, that has really helped because I've put Everton into that one. And um, and we're really having a good outwork. So, you know, really grateful for the space, to the space. The principle that I fall back on by default, because you, you, you may not appreciate it, but when you're a member of a household and you're in the minority, you have to constantly remind yourself that you know, the people in the majority are really expressions of God. So you have to look. So that, that, that's my, my fallback for you. And since coming to UCT, there ha you know, there has been some challenges. Um, and I am now convinced looking back that 
God places you where he knows you'll be able to survive these challenges. I remember in 2017, for example, I was suddenly, I can say, unemployed. And Kyle came home the evening from school. I was home the, the day I dropped him at school. And he came home and he saw me. He said, Mommy, what are you doing here? I said, Kyle, I'm unemployed. He said, Mommy, you're not working. I said, well, I, 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 and he, he said, the place. I said, no, I'm not. And he walked and went into the kitchen. And he came back and he said, Mommy, make sure you know what you're doing, you know. And I said, Kyle, watch God work. And within two weeks, I mean, my saying that to Kyle was because I had done my work. I knew where I wanted to be. I knew that where I was was in the right place. I knew that things was going to work out because of the God, that God presence around me. And I knew exactly that he was leading me somewhere by that point. That's why I was able to say that to Kyle because of the church and the messages that I was receiving at church leading up to that point. I remember a few weeks before that point, Reverend Sheila had a sermon and she told everybody to every day this week repeat, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it was when I was repeating that every day, I just felt like, listen, no, things just started to happen at the workplace. And I said, I'm not, this, this can't be right you know, what was happening. And I was so happy to, to, I was able to stand strong, tall, hold my head high, and just move. We would like to thank the youngers yes. and Nadine and Kyle oh to, for saying yes to sharing their relationship yes. with us. Yes. Because awesome, trust me, awesome, awesome. you know, it was so refreshing to hear. And we yes. are a practical Christianity, so we want to know that the principles that we teach here, they are being applied and that they work in your life, in your world, and in your affairs. Yes. We have lots on relationship for you this week, beginning with Reverend Sherry in our main service coming up shortly. And then after the service for a deeper dive on Zoom. But we also have another gift for you. On Saturday, we have Reverend Charles who will be doing a workshop for us. Check out Reverend Charles' video. Happy anniversary, Universal Center of Truth. 25 years for doing ministry in the world. To God be the glory. I'm the Reverend Charles M. Taylor, Senior Minister of the Universal Truth Center for Better Living in Miami, Florida. And I am so honored and pleased to be a part of your celebration this week. This Saturday, November 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I will be conducting a workshop. Do you know where your relationships are taking you? That's the question and the conversation we'll be having. I know this week you are exploring how your relationships can help you to meet your destiny. But join me this Saturday, November 14th, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, as we explore the question, do you know where your relationships are taking you? So you can boldly live the life God has designed for you to live. Live long and prosper. Oh, we have been making sure that our AF experience is meaningful and memorable. And if you've been enjoying this virtual version of AIF, send us some love now. But once enough heart, holy, holy, holy for heart, I come up there. We thank you, thank you for all that you do to support this ministry, all that you do to support our noonday meditations, all that you do with your time, talent, and effort. And on this love note, Diary. let us take our DI reading today, which is from page 16 of your DI. And the title is called Soar on Wings of Love. Take me high above the mountain. Let me ride on wings of love. These words from a popular song remind us that love lifts us above all seeming difficulties. Have you tried love? Better, better yet, have you tried God's love? When the stress and strain of life seem to rise, isn't it good to know that God's love is always there for you? Remember, if God is for you, then nothing and no one can be against you. Shift your thoughts. 
and eyes that are now fixed on the world and redirect them to the God presence within. Bask in the glow of love of God that is emanating from the inner chamber of your heart. Let God's love lift you from the valley of seeming defeat. God's love allows you to navigate successfully the deepest sea of seeming troubles. Rest assured that God's love will always see you through. Today, sing the words quoted from the song and raise your spirits high above the mountains of seeming despair. Do it in and through the power of God's love in you. And scriptural support is taken from Psalm 36, verse 7. And it says, How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Conroy? So, Nadia, thank you so much for the DI reading. Are you ready for our praise and worship experience? Ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready to give God some praise on this wonderful morning in AIF where we celebrate Rational Sunday, let me see you send some smiles. Let me see you send some hearts. Let me see you send some likes. Let me see you get the praise going. Come on, put your hands together for our praise team. Come on, we're going now. There is a new day. There is no sunshine. But clouds and it's dark in my heart and it feels like a cold night. Today's a new day, but where are my blue skies? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's alright. I, I almost gave up, but a power that I can't explain fell in my heart like a shower now. I smile, I know God is working, so I smile, even though I've been here for a while, I smile, I smile, again. smile. so I to look up when you look down, so I can't see the people now, you look so much better when you smile, smile, oh, you better smile, and you just smile, and you just smile.
Love one another just as I have loved you. vibrate in the words of the song what the world needs now is love not hate not pride not arrogance but pure love and not for just some of us but for all of us. Know this morning that your heart is big enough to embrace all of God's children and bless them and see love having its way as them. Love. Right where you are, bring it into the space that you occupy. For love is a healer. If you're in a hospital or institution or rehabilitation center, just remember the power of love. As we pray and center ourselves in this morning's prayer, we know that love is having its way. God of my being, 
and your being. Today I know that each of us as an individual expression of God is fulfilling his or her purpose, fulfilling his or her destiny by virtue of being connected to you as the only source. So there is no competition with anyone. With joy in my heart, I recognize that each individual has his or her own role to play. Each individual has his or her own position on the tree of life, and this is the good news. We work together for the common good. So I now allow this truth to transform my relationship, my experience, and my interactions with those around me. I see the seeming other just as I see myself. I treat others as I want to be treated with, with respect, respect, love, and, and dignity. dignity. As, as a spiritual, spiritual being and as a member of one spiritual family, I give thanks for the gift of service and, and the awareness of all I do is for the glory of the one self, the one that I have. Amen and amen. Because you've cared because you care for me in such a special way. Such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Your nature. That's why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, Lord, love today. You, Lord, today. Because you cared for because me. Because you cared for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why. That's why I praise you. That's why I lift you up. I lift you up. That's why I magnify, I magnify your, your name. name. And that's why this morning. That's why my heart, my heart is filled with Filled with praise. That's why. That's why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise overflowing as we say good morning once more, give thanks for another day together, another morning, for all of the testimonials. God bless you all for who you are and who you continue to be. Know that we bless you, we honor you, and we appreciate each one of you. We now affirm our destiny together. I give thanks for the relationships that encourage, strengthen, and affirm me as I pursue my destiny. I am one of God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with the one. And now we sing our first statement of faith. We are one, we are all God's children. 
This morning, I just feel so blessed once more to be able to present to some and introduce to others the Reverend Sherry James, an ordained minister with the Universal Foundation for Better Living. Reverend Sherry holds a BA degree from the University of Pennsylvania and a Master of Fine Arts from the University of Southern California. She is the creator of the Bible Hangout, a weekly online Bible study. She's also co-founder of the Wealth Habits Academy and a licensed financial professional. Prior to becoming a senior minister of Understanding Principles, which was founded by our own Reverend Della Reese, Reverend James worked in the entertainment industry as a producer and writer. Her church, Understanding Principles, fondly referred to as Up Church, is located in Inglewood, California. She is the proud member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and Jack and Jill of America, Pasadena chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, our presenter for this morning, we bless her as she comes. Let's give her some love. Let's send some hearts. Let's send some smiles to the Reverend Sherry James. God bless you, Reverend Sherry. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so good to be in this virtual setting with you. And I, I am so blessed to be here and I'm grateful to be a part of today. So I am, I, I have a question because I'm, I'm coming in from California and I'm just trying to pick up where, where we are, make sure I'm doing the right thing at the right time. Let me let you know that your destiny is in your hands. While I'm pulling my screen up, your destiny is in your hands. And I am excited to, to just share with you uh, some insights. Uh, and I love this text that you have chosen from um, the, Rev the Bishop, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh, he is someone that I, um, follow that I track and uh, it's just a really powerful, powerful teacher. And I think it's, it's really great that uh, you have chosen this text uh, to follow. And so I want to share with you uh, based on the title that the right relationships ensure that you reach your destiny. The right relationships ensure that you reach your destiny. And if you would just pray with me, Father, Mother, God, you have a message for this community. And I call on the presence and the power of God to anoint this message so that it is exactly what each person needs. I know what's been prepared, Spirit, but I ask that you utilize me as a vessel to serve, to give life, to remind people of who they are, and to give them what is necessary for this next level of their evolution. I thank you, God, because I know you always hear me when I pray. And so I know that I can relax right now and allow you to be you through me in the name and through the power that's in the consciousness of I am. I affirm that this prayer is so. And so it is. So the right relationships ensure your that you reach your destiny. And so I chose the, the scripture from uh, 2 Kings 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, excuse me, 1 through 7. And this story is probably one of my favorite stories. It is, it's, it is uh, one of the favorite stories that I love to, to go to in scripture because I think it has so much for us, no matter who you are, male, female, child, really, really doesn't matter. And one of the things that we learn from this story is that destiny is your greatness. Destiny is your greatness. Your destiny is greatness. No matter where you start, if you align yourself with the principles of God, your end is greatness. No matter where you are. And, and if you look at, at in the Bible, just about every story in there, if the person aligned themselves with the principles of God, 
then their story ended in greatness. So you look at Joseph's story, it ends in greatness. You look at David's story, it ends in greatness. You look at Daniel's story, it ends in greatness. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, it ends in greatness. That this And, and so this widow whose story that I chose to highlight, her story also ends in greatness. And everywhere you look, this is what is happening. And so this widow's destiny was greatness. And the moment that she aligned herself with the principles of God, then she was able to step into the, the, the greatness that was in her had an avenue for expression. The greatness that was in her had an avenue for expression. And the thing is, is that life is growth. And, and stick with me because I'm, I'm where I'm going is this foundation. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Life is growth. Everything grows from small to big, from center to circumference. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment and not the flower. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment and not the flower. The expectation of the flower is growth. The expectation of a puppy is growth. The expectation of every living form in this kingdom of God, if you will, is growth. And so if that growth is not happening on any level, then there's something going on in the environment. There's something going on in terms of who you are aligned with, how you are aligned, that is out of alignment with the principles of God. God's expectation for you is growth. God's expectation for the widow is growth. When the widow goes to Elisha, Elisha represents her, the, the, a type of Christ. So this, this story uh, symbolizes the, the, the consciousness within us that feels like it's been abandoned, that it feels like it's been let go, that it's been uh, forgotten, right? That forgotten consciousness, when that consciousness reaches for the Christ of its being, there is this reminder, there is this restoration that happens that when you reach for the Christ of your being, you are given a prescription for life and not for death. God is interested in your growth. God is interested in your expansion. And so too must you become interested in your expansion. It is not the way of God to shrink yourself. It is not the way of God to shrink yourself. Sometimes, sometimes we, the, the failures of life can um, uh, influence us to, uh, to shrink. Sometimes the failures of life can, can, can uh, influence us to adjust our reach. You know, we remember the last time that things didn't quite work out the way that we wanted them to. And so we don't quite give a full effort the next time out. But I want you to know that that is not the way of God. That is not the way of God. Every time you shrink yourself, you take yourself out of alignment with the principles of God. And this is what's happening with this widow before we, before we meet her and she meets Elijah, is that she has shrunk herself. She's gotten to the point where the creditors are coming and they are taking her sons who represented her future income. It is not the way of God to shrink yourself, but you have got to understand, you've got to work with this universe the way that this universe is designed. And the, one of the ways that this universe is designed is that you are in relationship to other people. I've heard people say, you know, I like animals more than I like people. And I always think that's a problem because a puppy can't rent you a house. <laughs> An ox cannot build you one. A cow cannot farm your food. The way that this earth is organized is that our needs are met through the relationships that we have with other people. 
And so that therefore the destiny that you are designed for is by design going to require you to take advantage of the relationships in your experience. And so this is, there is an art to learning how to work with people, how to, how to connect with people. You got to understand that every relationship unlocks a new level in your journey. Every relationship unlocks a new level in your journey. People are an indispensable element of your success. See, failure we can do alone. If you think about the failures in your life, they pretty much have been things where you where you didn't show up. Right? They, it was you by yourself that failed. Even if you failed with a group, you had your part to play in the failure that happened. Failure we can do alone, but success, success requires help. One of the things that I have learned in, in, in uh, developing as a financial professional is that wealth is a team sport. Success is a team sport. It is not something that you do by yourself. You have it is it is through cooperative economics that you actually create wealth in your experience. There's no such thing as getting wealthy by yourself. It is the combined efforts of the people around you that then support the flow of wealth into your experience. And so failure you can do alone, but success takes help. And so whether it's somebody to encourage you to assist you, someone to challenge you, or whatever whatever the role is that success takes help. And every person holds a key that unlocks the next level in your destiny. Every person, if you, your mom, your dad, your spouse, your friends, your coworkers, the person at the grocery store, the person down at the bank, every relationship holds a key that unlocks the next level of your destiny. No single person has all the keys to your destiny. And this is really where we get tripped up. No single person contains all the keys that you need in order to move to the next level in your experience. This widow, part of what tripped her up is that she felt like her husband, who now has died, held all the keys to her destiny. And you know this because when she comes to Elisha, he says to her, you know, you know, what do you have in your house? Or, or she appeals to him and she says, look, um, basically, you knew my husband. She's blaming her condition on her deceased husband. No person contains all the keys that unlock the different levels that you must go through in order to express your, your, your greatness. And the question is, how many times do we stop our forward progress, our forward movement, because of someone who left our experience? Whether it was through a breakup, whether it was through a death or some other transition, how many times do we just stop because we feel like the person who left they left and they took an essential ingredient that we needed for our full expression. How many times have we just a job left, right? That, that work environment left. And so we felt like that's it. That's the fullness of what I'm able to express. Well, I just stopped by to tell you that your destiny has never been tied to who left. God would never anchor your destiny to what's not in your possession. And so the question that you want to start to ask is not who left, but what is left? Because whatever is left is exactly what you need in order to unlock, in order to move into your next level of greatness. And so with people, the question is like, how, how do you navigate that, right? Because it doesn't feel good when someone leaves our lives. But I'll tell you why it doesn't feel good, because we have put them very often in a role that they don't belong in. 
and we have uh, we have made a a a, 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 a a have a misunderstanding of of their role. And I love the way that that T D Jake speaks about it. He says you've got confidants, you've got constituents, and you've got comrades. And it's understanding the difference of each person in your experience so that when their season is done, we're not trying to keep them in a role that they don't really fit in. Confidants are for you and with you. This is a, a direct quote from him. Are for you and with you and intimately intertwined in your life. They are with you to make sure you reach your destiny. They will challenge you and confront you to stay on the path to destiny. They will get all in your business and in your face if they think you are out of order. They are not afraid to tell you when you're wrong and affirm when you are right. Constituents are not into you. Rather, they are into what you are for. They are not for you, nor does your destiny matter to them. But as long as you are for what they are for, they will walk with you and work with you, but it ends there. And then you have comrades. Comrades are not for you, nor are they for what you are for. What it is is that they are against what you are against. And so comrades make strange bed, bedfellows. You know, we just finished a major, uh, uh, what, what felt like the election of, the, of our lifetime in the US. And we all picked up a lot of comrades, folks that we would never necessarily align ourselves with, but they met the description of being against what we were against. And so for that season, we could walk. Right. He says uh, they will team up with you, not so you can reach your destiny, not so you can reach your destiny, but to fight a common enemy. And don't be fooled <laughs> or confused by close connection. You may line up with somebody. And it, it may feel like some pot of coal, like we on the same page when really we just against the same thing. They will be with you only until victory happens. He, uh, he uses the analogy in the book or metaphor in the book, and I thought it was powerful. He said they're like scaffolding. That that you know the scaffolding is up as long as the building is being built, and the moment that the building is being built, at this moment, the, the moment that the building it has ended, the scaffolding comes down. And so one of the things that we have to learn to do is to not make assumptions. We have to learn not to learn how to discern people for their purpose in our experience. Because a lot of the heartache that we have in, in, in our relationships and what makes people say things like, I like animals better than I like people, is that, I is that they have not yet learned the skill to know who's a comrade, who's a constituent, and who's a confidant. And so the, the, the roles have gotten confused because they have taken someone who was a constituent who was really only there for as long as they were on the same page about a particular issue and confuse them with a confident, which is that person that God assigned to walk with us for a longer part of the journey. And so when we come to relationships, we don't want to make assumptions. We want to always be willing to step back and look at every relationship for what it really is. You know, this is what happened with the widow is that, you know, there, it may have been that her that her husband, her deceased husband for a time was a confidant. It may have been or it may have been that, that her husband was a constituent to get her to the next level of her journey. But the point is that when the husband was no longer a part of the experience, she thought that she could not go on. And I don't know who thinks that they can't go on because of who left. But I came to tell you that God has, that people are coming into your experience simply to drop off a key. They are simply here to drop off a key that you then turn and unlock and move to your next level of greatness. 
And if you think that they have come, even the confidants, I would say, even the confidants, if you think that they have come to bring you something more than just the key, this is where we get into trouble. And so how much time do we lose trying to make people be what they are not? Accept them for right where they are. Accept them right where they are. What they have given is all that they need to give. I, it's it's learning to lean on spirit. It's learning to lean on spirit and not on people because people will disappoint you. People will disappoint you. It, you know, it, you have to release everyone into God's loving care. Because there's so many times that people come into your experience and 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 they're there for a season and they disappoint you and they and they walk out of your experience, whether through death or transition or just a breakup. And then we have the, we, we we're attached to them and we don't want to let them go. But we have to release everyone into God's loving care, including our children, including our parents. We have to forgive them when they disappoint us. And we really, really, really can't take anything personally. Really can't take anything personally. You know, what, what, what someone brings you is always a function of what that person has been eating emotionally and psychologically. Whatever it is, if, if they come to you with hate, all that tells you is they've been eating from a plate of hate. It really doesn't have anything to do with you unless you take it personally and make their poison your poison. You have to come to relationships not making assumptions. You have to come to relationships not assuming that you know that this person is a confidant because you feel so close to them. Time will be your best friend or your worst enemy as far as relationships are concerned. You have to let some let let how someone shows up in your experience show you what they are to you. And then once you know what they are to you, once you find out, mm, I thought that person was a confidant, but I found out they were really a comrade. Once you find out what they really are for you, is to accept them right where they are. Accept them right where they are. It, you know, we lose so much time focusing on what we do not have, right? I, we don't have this relationship or we don't have that relationship, but that's not how you build the abundance of God. It is to begin to find the good. And if what you seek is a confidant, then ask spirit for a confidant. Really ask spirit for a confidant and trust spirit to provide that for you. But don't go trying to make someone a confidant when that is not the role, at least de as demonstrated by their behavior and their actions, that's not the role that they were meant to be in. And so your objective is to really understand how each relationship helps you give vent to the spirit, right? You, you're meant to give vent to the spirit. I don't know if you, I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I mean, I, I suspect you did. You got, you got that, that powerful Reverend Doctor down there telling you that. But, you, but your job is to give vent to the spirit. Your job is to let the presence and the power of God that's inside of you, that's formless, that has no form, you're meant to give vent to it, let it out into expression. You have something inside of you that we need. You have something inside of you that we need. You are not here to keep the status quo. You are here to disrupt it through the expression of the presence of God inside of you. And each relationship helps you get the best of you out into expression. Now, sometimes those lessons come and they're wonderful. And sometimes they come and it's like, God, that was a hard classroom to get my lessons in. That was a really tough classroom to get my lessons in. But every relationship, relationship expands you in some way. Every relationship, you, the, the, I was thinking about the widow, the widow, her husband introduced her 
to the person who held the next key that she needed. The reason she knew who Elisha was is because of her husband. And as long as she was stuck on her husband being the source of her supply, versus realizing that God is a source of her supply and people are but channels to help you unlock what God has given you, she sat in despair. But thank God she had the wisdom to call on an Elisha. Thank God for those times when we have the wisdom to call on the Christ of our being, to open us up, to stretch us, to bring us out of our comfort zones, to remind us, no, you have something in your house that can help you become who you are. Isn't that powerful? You have something in your house that is an essential ingredient to you becoming who you are. And it is the relationships in your experience that teach you how to use it. But you can't get hung up on any one relationship. Each relationship is part of helping you unlock the good that is in your house. You know, few athletes work with the same coach for their entire life, right? Few athletes do that. Lifetime friends are wonderful, but let's not get hung up thinking that they are the be all end all. Drink in every experience as it is happening. Max out every moment that you have. But when the moment is over, be willing to let go. When the moment is, how do you know the moment is over? The person left. <laughs> that, that's the easy one. And when they, when they leave your experience, it's not a statement on who you are. It just means that, they, that, that the key that they were meant to give you in that season of your experience is complete. And so you can bless them you can let them go and you can keep moving along the path to your greatness. You, you don't know when someone is gonna leave your experience. They may circle back. They may have a key for, for one season of your life and nothing in the next season and come back and bring you another key in the next season. Your job is keep moving, keep, keep moving. That's it. I'm on, I'm on my journey. I'm not paying attention to who's giving me what keys. I just know you got a key. And if your key uh, takes you out of my experience, I'm willing to let you go because that you, you don't contain all of the keys. No person has that. And so when you leave, I give thanks. I give thanks for the key that you provided for that season of my experience. And when it's over, I let it go and I keep moving because I never want to lose sight of the goal. The goal is the embodiment of spirit. God put you here to turn yourself back into God. God put you here to turn yourself back into God. And so right in the midst of your circumstances, God is saying, transform. You are not waiting on the right relationship in order to become who you are. And, you know, the widow was perhaps waiting for the next relationship to help her become who God designed her to be. And God says, transform anyway. Transform anyway. Every relationship is there to help you embody a little bit more of spirit. Some relationships help you grow physically. Some help you grow mentally. Some help you grow spiritually. Some help you grow in all different and physically, mentally, and spiritually. But the purpose of all of them is to turn yourself back into God. Each of us is 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 walking around with a little bit of a shell on us that is keeping us from being the full expression of God. And every relationship helps us chip away at that shell. God put you here so that you could turn yourself back into God. And just as Jesus became the embodiment of God, so too must you become the embodiment of God. So many times we want someone else 
to be the light. We're following someone's light and we're not ready when, when their light leaves and now it's time for our light to be the primary light. No matter who you are following, they are not a replacement light. They're not a replacement bulb for, for your light. And so your relationships are there to unlock a portion of the expression of your light. And if you understand that, then you begin to look at each relationship as an opportunity to let more of God express. And when you do that, you stop getting attached to relationships and feeling badly when they end or feeling good when they stay. You recognize that my job is to be the embodiment of spirit and everything in my life is conspiring to make that so. And so I surrender right now every relationship in my experience. I release it back to God. Every person, my, my, my spouse, my, my friends, my child, my, I release them all back to God. And I give thanks for whatever they are supposed to be for my experience, but I know that my end goal is the embodiment of God. God bless you. Thank you. See you. 
just waiting just to ease your troubled mind It's more than you never know Instead of walking away Your angel, and when all hope is gone from here, no matter how far you are near, it makes no difference who you are. Oh, here's my shoulder, you can lean on me, lean on me, yeah. Here's my shoulder, you. my shoulder you can lean on me wow god bless you let's give reverend sherry another round of applause beautiful 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 we're asking you to open up your bible and make sure that you read the scripture um, I was supposed to read it and I uh, missed that cue uh, thinking she was going to do it, but uh, you have the scripture. Uh, it was given to you. Let me just give it to you again. Second Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. Second Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. Thank you so much, Reverend Sherry. Thank you to our musicians. Akiria and Shanice, uh, Rudy on keys, Otmar and on drums, Makiri, and all of the technical team, we bless you. I want you to stay with me this morning because we have heard about the confidant, we've heard about the constituents, and we've heard about the comrades. And this morning, I just want to pause before we do our healing treatment. And I'm going to invite our board chair, Mr. Conroy Wilson, to join me on set today, to just join me. You guys just follow me, cameras, because Conroy has been a calm confidant during this season to the ministry. Come, Conroy. I know he's saying, what do you want me to do? Just follow me. And I want you to have a seat. Conroy has been, as our board chair and just as a human being, such a confidant to us during uh, this season. He has used his gifts and his talents and his influence to garner together and gather together a team of people who have so lovingly and willingly offered their talents in this ministry in a way that is unbelievable. From lights to cameras to recordings to videos to editing, all of this has happened in such a wonderful and magnificent way. And Conroy, we want to say thank you. So I want you to just look at this screen. And the reason we're doing it at this time during this relationship week is that tomorrow is Conroy's birthday, everybody. <laughs> yes, tomorrow is his birthday, and we want to just celebrate him. So Conroy, we want you to just look at this screen. You guys stay with us as we listen to what people have to say to you today. Conroy Wilson, happy birthday, my brother. God bless you. God bless the gifts that have been given to you and the gifts that you so freely share, not only with this ministry, but with others. May they return to you a million fold and more. And uh, I just wanna say thank you for everything you're doing, everything you have done. 
and all that is unfolding before you. Your future is so bright. I need sunglasses. Happy birthday. Oh, today is your birthday. I wish you many, many, many more. Yesterday is your birthday. One you've never had before. Happy birthday, Conroy. May all the love and support that you so joyfully give to others be returned to you today. Press down, shaking together and running over. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Uncle! Yeah, man. Bless and love you, Mr. Wilson. Happy birthday and more life, more love, more blessings. Just go on, be the generous person you are, see me. And you know, more you can tell. Happy, happy birthday! So, so, happy birthday, Mr. Winsor and Uncle Yeah, same person. All right. Better so, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday! I hope you live to see many, many, many more birthdays, and I pray that you'll have a great day today. Bye, you're your time. So happy birthday! Happy birthday to ya! I have known Conroy for nearly 25 years. We met in February of 1996, when through an invitation I gave to Dane Lewis, I she became part of our church community. I have watched Conroy grow personally, professionally, and spiritually. Mr. Chairman, I would sing happy birthday, but it's not about me. It's not about my Digicel aspiration. This is about you and your birthday. Happy birthday to you, many, many blessings, total prosperity, live long and prosper is what my husband would say. Cheers. Conroy, happy birthday, my friend. I wish you the very best on this day that all your dreams will come true. Live long and prosper. Happy birthday, Mr. Wilson. Thank you for introducing me to the city. It's been a pleasure knowing you over the, over the years. And I must say, you've been doing a great job. Keep it up. Conroy B. Wilson, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for showing up in the way that you do. Thank you for all the support that you've given to the Asher Company, to me, to our members. Thank you for the support that you've given to Reverend Sheila of the Universal Center of Truth for Better Living. Thank you for the support that you give as production manager for helping us to transition as a church into a new way of doing church. Doing church differently so that we can keep our doors open virtually. Reach out to all the people who still want to hear that inspirational, spiritual, motivational message. The music. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for also helping us, the persons who are in teacher training, to stay on course, being consistent. If there's one thing we can learn from you, it's consistency. You consistently show up no matter what, whether it's rain or shine or pandemic. You are there showing up and we are grateful to you and we are thankful and we are truly appreciative. Happy birthday. Have a happy, happy, happy birthday. Hi Conroy, it's Jermaine. And Caroline. Wishing you a wonderful birthday on behalf of both of us and the rest of the board of directors, Conroy. We just want to say we value you as chair and for your leadership through this time. Thank you so much for all that you've done. You see truth, especially through COVID, would not have been what it is without your inspirational leadership and visioning. So thank you, we love you, and we bless you. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday, Bancroft. Happy anniversary of your Earth experience. Wishing you all the best going forward. Abundance, prosperity in all areas of your life. Happy birthday, my brother. Wow, wow, wow. So Conroy, that was uh, what we could pull together because you know everybody's all over everywhere. We're just so grateful. And we have uh, Mr. Vice Chair of the Board, Mr. Jomaine McKenzie, 
Uh, we have something for you, <laughs> uh, tangible gift. Oh. oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Oh, oh. wow. Can we get that table to no. put the, uh, hold on a oh. minute, wow. Tom, you better, you better stand up and collect it. <laughs> Oh, no. Yes, oh. yes. We heard that oh. you wanted a huge, oh. huge, huge screen. <laughs> and uh, so here you have it. Oh. And uh, oh. Conroy, make sure it's for you. You could loan it to Ashy <laughs> and loan it to the church, but remember, it belongs to you. Thank and you. so are we singing happy birthday now? Are we doing that? Oh. Let's 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 sing whatever we're singing. This is so beautiful. Everybody, oh. join us. Mr. Join Wilson, us. This is for you. Come on, Shani. Roy Wilson. Happy Those birthday. School girl days of telling tales and biting nails are gone. But in my mind, I know. Conroy B. Wilson, who's been the wind beneath our wings, who's been the visionary for what virtual ministry could look like. Thank you so very much for everything, Conroy. 
We really do appreciate you and we bless you. So let's just take a moment and just say to Conroy, God, this is your child. We know, we know, we know that the gifts that he shares so freely belong to you. And as Reverend Sherry said, he has made room for the gifts to come forth freely. And this spiritual community and those who partake in it have benefited greatly. So in openness and receptivity now, we simply know that the funnel of good that has opened up within him is now turned upon him, returning to him in multiplied measure. Conroy, there's nothing that's too big for you to ask for. We stand with you in faith, and we know that all that you have given now rushes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We're truly grateful and thankful, and we bless you. We bless the womb that bore you, Miss Carol, and we give thanks for your life. God is good. In the authority of the living Christ that is your life, we pray, we release, we let go, and let God. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so it is. God bless you. You know, someone said to me, let's give each other our flowers before we leave this planet. Let's give them while they can hear and feel and accept and say, thank you so very much. We've talked about relationships today, Reverend Sherry, outstanding job. The book is fantastic. And we have to ask ourselves, what hinders us? What hinders us? Are we trying to put a confidant, confidant in the place of a comrade? Are we trying to make a comrade a confidant? How do we let people be who they have chosen to be? How do we let go of the strings of control? How do we just simply say thank you for what you can be in my life? That's the question. For whatever you were able to be, thank you so much. And all that you weren't able to be, thank you so much. Because to be something you weren't meant to be would mean that you would have to step out of your authenticity. And you would have to put on a mask and be something you were never intended to be. So I thank you for being authentic with yourself. Think of the people in your life and, and, and memories will come up as you move through this week of relationships. And our prayer is that you will be able to bless every single soul for the role that they played in your life and for all the gifts that they brought and for all the gifts they were unable to bring. We give thanks today. We give thanks today. We give thanks today. We want to send loving blessings to Janet Taylor Harris's family on the transition of her mother, who was 104, Miss Teta. Remember the author, the one who published her book at 102 years? God bless you, Teta, on the way into your next chapter of life. You have indeed, you've been a blessing and you were conscious and aware your entire lifetime that God loves you and we love you. God bless you all. Thank you so much for so much. We love you and we thank you. And now we prepare our tithe, our gift of love, however that looks for you. We bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We are so grateful to you. As we come live from the sanctuary that's been transformed into a studio to do God's work, as Reverend Charles said, to keep the doors open, to continue to serve, 
You know, some analytics came up on my screen the other day as it relates to the Universal Center of Truth and its social media platforms. And it said that for the past 14 days, we've reached over 10,000 people. We're so grateful and thankful and our prayer is that the message of the ministry has been a blessing and a benediction to people wherever they may be in the world. We hope that the consciousness of love expands outward from center to circumference, as Reverend Sherry said, and just be a blessing and a benediction and an upliftment to all of humanity as we move through this time of accelerated change and growth. Remember, God is with you because God is your primary relationship. And so we take our gift, whatever represents your giving today. It may be a debit card. It may be a credit card. It may be you going to your computer, your tablet, and doing a bank transfer. It may be through PayPal. It may be through Zelle. It may through your own, be through your own banking platform. But we want to thank you. We want to bless you. And we want to honor you. And we say together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies this offering. God is the source, gives abundantly, I receive gratefully, and I give again generously because God is my source. And I give to that which blesses me. I give to that which reminds me that I am special. I give to that which reminds me that God is my help in every appearance of need. And God does my every hunger feed. Thank you for your gifts. We love you. We bless you. And we appreciate you. And love will raise you up. On eagle's wings. On eagle's wings. Bear you. Bear you up. The breath of dawn. Breath of dawn. And make you to shine. again and let's bless the giving and love will raise, raise us you up on eagles wings eagles wings soaring high above it all you thank you god time and love is holding us embracing us come on and love will raise you up you're being raised in this moment come on dare to go higher the breath of dawn and then make you to shine your love, of your peace, of your joy, of your all in all. That's where we are in the presence of God, of love, of peace, of plenty, of joy, of celebration. Thank you, God. So I can't say enough on this Relationship Sunday that we love you, we honor you, we bless you, we appreciate you. We have come this far by faith. We've come this far because of your commitment. We've come this far because of your givingness. We've come this far because of your love. We've come this far because of your support. And we bless you each and every one. 
And now we bring this service to a close. And we just want to say thank you. So into your hands and into your presence, dear God, we commit these, your children. Each and every one. May the good desires of their heart be fulfilled. May their deepest longing be realized in this moment, this very day. And may your love ever lead them forward. And in faith, we affirm that they are healed in every way. We give thanks for their wholeness in mind and body and affairs. We give thanks for being in relationship with each and every one. Thank you, God, for they are indeed a blessing. They bless us, and our prayer is that we are a blessing to them and that we are together a blessing to the wider world. This is our prayer. Thank you, God, and so it is. Remember the workshop on Saturday with Reverend Charles. Look for the details. God bless you. And so it is. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Gave you a spirit of love and power to live courageously. I tell you, seek ye first so all things will come naturally. Now it is my turn to do much greater and even more. I choose to live my destiny, health and prosperity. I choose to live my destiny, wealth and harmony. I choose to live my destiny, just like Jesus. I choose to live courageously. God is my banqueting, standing behind me, keeping me strong. I'm living my purpose, I can't go wrong. I choose to live my destiny. I choose to live my destiny. Wealth and harmony. I choose to live my destiny. Just like Jesus. I choose to live courageously. God is my backing. My destiny. I choose to live. Oh, I choose to live. So, first of all, thank you so much to the spiritual community for all the love that you continue to pour out. Remember. We all work with and need each other. And so this week especially, check in on somebody and let us stay in relationship with each other, continue yes. to love and bless each other and sharing all that we get here with the wider world and the community. Oh my, I tell you, Conroy, I, I, you know, I have to say to you persons, this guy here is like the consummate producer, director, just awesome person overall. I love him so till. But let me tell you something, you know, even after all that surprise and everything, he jumped right back into the producer <laughs> role. He's like behind the scenes and like, yes, you go there, you go here, you go da 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 da. But just to remind you guys, it was awesome. Happy Thank birthday you. when it comes. Thank I love you, you love you, Thank love you. you. For Thank such you. a time as this, we've always said, Thank you're here Thank and you. I bless you. So remember that we have the Zoom breakout rooms. That's a wonderful feature of AIF. We have two main rooms today. We have a prayer room and we have the main room that will be done by Reverend Cherie herself. So all those questions, all the notes you made, you can get clarification. I mean, there were just so many nuggets being dropped at you at every moment in time. I made several notes. So the youth, I know that they have requested and they're gonna be in the main room today. So there's no youth breakout room. There's just the main room and a prayer room, right? So remember also after today, finishes at 12.30, Join us again for Noonday Meditation that happens every day at, from 12 to 12.30 on our social media pages. But this Saturday on Zoom, we have the Relationship Workshop with Reverend Charles. You don't want to miss that. Make sure you sort out your Zoom from early, upgrade your phone, whatever you need to do. And make sure you come and have fun with us this Saturday. And then next week, Sunday, we're going to Social Unfoldment where we're going to have fun. We're planning a surprise and we're following the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But thank you it's so much. It's all going to work well. Thank you, Nadia. Thank, thank you to our musicians. 
Thank you to our team and thank you to our spiritual leader, the Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen, yes. for continuing to guide us through this wonderful experience. Yes. Have a great week, guys. Thank you for our team. Wait, don't forget, Conroy, don't forget that if you are so enjoying this experience yes. and you want to share your messages of love, your messages of gratitude, anything you want to say about this 25-year journey that you see truth has been on, ensure that you send an email to us at aifuctruth at gmail.com. All right, so enjoy, go out together, and live your destiny. destiny. I am Conroy, this is Nadia, and, and we are checking out. Yes. See you on Zoom. See you next week, we're orange. I choose to live my destiny. Just